Nice. back to two turtles homestead the shop edition it's winter time and we ain't got a lot going on at the homestead a little bit here and there but uh come along with me i'll sh show you how i uh built a murphy bed for a client it's not a tutorial but there's there might be some little snippets in there some little pointers if you decide to make one they're pretty neat and I'm sure maybe a lot of y'all's wives have said, boy, that Murphy bed's neat. Or seen a Murphy bed and where you got a little spot and you need an extra room when you have, say, the holidays. You need an extra bed, but you don't want to take up a lot of space and you ain't really got the room for another bed. These are pretty neat. They don't take up a lot of room. This is a horizontal Murphy bed. I didn't even know they made them like that until the, the homeowner got with me. And um, you can do them vertical. This is vertical. No, this is horizontal. Vertical's up and down. Horizontal's left and right. Horizontal Murphy bed. And um, I believe they make the Murphy bed kits to where you can uh, it could double as a desk whenever it's closed up. So just an idea for some uh, smaller spaces or something. Hey, yeah. Come along. It'll be fun. They're done. Just need another mattress. Cool. Fun project. Apparently a guy named Murphy was dating this opera singer back in the day. Around 1900 or so. And you know, back then, people had a few more, a little more couth, I guess you might say, about things. Okay, so here's the kit. Easy DIY Murphy bed. Just type that in, you Google it, get right to their website, it has all the information. This is what the hardware kit comes with. Comes with all the hardware here, your all your pivot points, your pivot brackets, the um, cylinder thing, the cylinder things, I forget what they call them. All your hardware for that. And then it comes with three pamphlets. You put together instructions, material list, da 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 da. And since I've already done one, this is kind of the three books. Uh, one of them says what it comes with, all the tools you'll need. And the one tool it doesn't say to come with that I would suggest, and I'll show you how it works, is this is actually that one. And this pre-drills your holes for all your screws and counter sinks so everything's flush. But the one it doesn't come with is this. And what this thing does, when you, you put it on a drill and it's kind of angled right here. So let's say you get everything lined up where it's going to go. You put that in there and turn your drill on and push down and it centers all of your holes. Because if you don't get them dead center, you go to put your screws in, and if you have them, if you have your pilot hole off a little bit, when you when you tighten it all down, it's going to want to move that bracket around a little bit when when the screw sets in here, the screw head. And when you get to these, the point of putting on this hardware and stuff, it needs to be spot on. You, you don't have much room for play or everything get out of out of balance out of whack and uh won't be good so that little five dollar tool right there i've had this one for years i use it on door hinges and stuff especially just a kind of a i forget what they call it the center marks the centers of all that stuff but you can get them for about five bucks they don't make them as good as this anymore though i just saying but anyhow um the instructions come with, <clears throat> whenever you order your kit, you get, need to specify. They'll send you a particular kit for the size of bed. 
king, queen, twin, and you can do the vertical or the horizontal. So you got to specify that. We're doing the two horizontals. Which means the bed lays like this and don't stand up long ways, which is what a lot of people usually think of as a Murphy bed. This, this stands up the short way like that and um, works good on the space I'm doing. And it kind of makes it not as heavy. You don't have to lift that whole mattress over your head. So if you have space for horizontal, works pretty good. They got some other kits too. Uh, the one thing we're doing is we're actually doing a twin long and I did not see on our website dimensions for a twin long. But uh, anyhow, the um, kit you order all this is laid out. All the spot, the sizes are specified. So if you're just doing a normal size, whatever comes with the kit, they've got all the hard work or all the math work done for you. You just cut everything to size. Like this is a sheet of plywood. This is a sheet. Shows you how to get everything, get everything cut to size and you put it together. I had to do a little reverse engineering and shorten some of this stuff up a little bit, but I still made it work just because of my constraints on the job site. But it worked. That's kind of one of the reasons I only did one to make sure I, make sure I did everything right. But um, so that's that. So basically, you just cut all of this, get it all ripped down, then you just start putting it together. And what I would recommend, they have it comes with instructions with for a MDF or that particle board stuff. And I would, I would suggest using a three quarter plywood. This is a sanded ply. It's about $65 a sheet now. They have some in oak. If you're gonna stain it, our particular instance, this is gonna be painted. So I went with this, because the uh, MDF and the particle board stuff it, it flexes a lot and the particle board stuff doesn't hold the screws as well. Everything's glued and screwed and all that, but this is a lot better material. You might as well spend that extra 70 or $80 on all this material and build it out of this. It'll be a, you'll have a lot better product if you can. That's what I would recommend. Stay tuned. I'll make the rest of the video pretty quick, short and sweet and just kind of highlight a few areas because the uh, if you can read the uh, instructions are pretty good um, you got to go back and forth a little bit just to double check things but it's pretty good stay tuned we'll get this stuff ripped up thanks for coming along before she come over he put the bed up into the closet yeah Ah, hey, I just put some clean sheets on. <laughs> but that's the difference between us and them from back then. Okay, I got this piece cut to length, which is all of these. And this part right here, it's an EB part. It is 16 inches wide. So I'm going to rip a 16 inch board off of this piece of plywood. And then over here on this one, this is 16 inches wide as well. It gets cut off another piece of plywood. And since these two pieces, this one and this one, they, they're the, uh, the top and the sides of this whole bed. While I'll have my table saw all set up, I'll rip my 16 inch board off of this sheet and I'll grab the sh another sheet and rip one 16 inch board right here just it helps eliminate getting off just a little bit on either one just with when I, while i'm resetting everything it'll just help with the precision on this that's it on to the next step All right, all those are cut. 
And as I go down through here, all these are labeled. So I just label them as I go to help keep me from cutting the wrong stuff. Then we're gonna cut this page here, which are those pieces, get them cut the length, and we'll be ready to start putting it together. Very important, everything is true and square. Um, one of these sheets of plywood was actually about 3 16ths out of square on one end, so make sure you check it. Be a good idea. Okay, I got all the pieces cut, and um, most everything on here is glued and screwed, but uh, might be a quick little tip for somebody that doesn't do any carpentry and stuff. Um, this, this is my first piece right here. I've got it clamped down. I put some glue on it, don't matter what kind, Elmer's, Gorilla, whatever. Um, I've just used this for years and like it. But um, So I clamp it down, and then I come up back up underneath here, and none of that'll be seen, but you can put it. I took my 18 gauge nailer and just popped a couple little trim nails in right there to help keep that thing from wanting to move around while I screw it in. So we'll, we'll get this screwed together. I gotta drill four holes, put some screws in it. And I'll put most of the rest of it together because y'all just kind of rinse and repeat. Or put whatever piece goes where, glue it, screw it, and on to the next. So. Just a little, you wanna kind of keep it straight. That's about as straight as I can go for right now. So that pre drills it, countersinks it. And I used, um, I wouldn't use sheetrock screws on this particular project. They're, they're, I use a construction screw. They're a lot stronger. The uh, sheetrock screws will hold it, but they don't have much strength. Like they shear easy and can break easy. So I would definitely use a construction screw. It takes a, a hundred and something two inch and a hundred and something inch and a quarter on this particular bed. Okay, we're getting ready to start attaching some of the hardware. So I have all my measurements over here. Double check all your measurements. And then I'm gonna be drilling it out with a three quarter inch Forstner bit. Um, so what I do, I find that point, and then I don't have a center punch, so I'll take a little trim nail here and get right on that and hit it with a hammer and get a good starting point because this is where this stuff needs to be dead on the money for all this to operate so i'll get these drilled out and then gotta do some marking and drilling over there and then we'll come back to attaching this hardware This is where that little center punch pre-drill thing comes in handy. I'll get you in here real quick. You can see these little screws go in here on this particular section. And that marks the dead center of all that. Because um, if, if you get off just a little bit, say like that, this whole bracket assembly, that whole door will be out of whack a little bit. So um, make sure you get it centered up.
I moved it a little bit, but you can kind of get the gist of it here. Some little pre-drilled holes there. That's what you're looking for. We'll get this together and go to the next. A little bit of precision. Get on the money. Another quick tip for people that don't know. But to keep from over tightening this, because a lot of people want to squeeze that trigger real quick and take make that drill take off, it's a variable speed. So you squeeze it, kind of like you'd be shooting. Don't jerk it. Just squeeze it. If you set the clutch down kind of low, it'll stop and it won't over tighten them and suck them in too far. I opted to, this is the part, the mattress that's on this piece of plywood here. And this is one of the side panels. The mattress sits in here. This comes down and is the leg for the outside of it. You don't have to. I opted to round this off because even though the mattress is taller than this, in this particular instance, might not want a sharp corner right there. No kids, kiddos be jumping up and down and pop their kneecap. You got to take care of the kiddos. On to the next section. Another section of hardware done. This will be the sides. Bed pivots there. The shock thing hooks from there over to that end of that thing. On to the next. Glue all those membrane or all those members insane in the membrane. Okay, that didn't take long. That's the subframe and the outer parts of the frame for the mattress area. This is the face panel. <clears throat> That's all glued and screwed together. I have all my lines I think I showed earlier on here. So I'm gonna test fit this and make sure. Everything hits. These are my outside pieces. Make sure everything lines up just right. Very important that this would be the bottom or the back. When it's down, everything lines up just flush right here or it'll rub later. Oh, and if, if you stuck with the video this long, I appreciate it. I'm trying to make it kind of quick and easy and maybe some a few little pointers if I could come up with any, just, it's a little involved. I mean, it's, it's a, I had seven, it's probably about a 10 hour project in all honesty. Um, you know, take your time and don't be lazy about it, but, but you got to take your time. It's, you got to have some precision. So thanks for coming along so far. We'll get on with the getting. Okay. So the, Subframe is now glued and screwed to the face panel, all from the upper side. And uh, just make sure, like I said before, you don't get the wrong screws and or drill through the face panel on because you'll see it from the underneath side, which is what you'll see when it's finished. But all this is in. Uh, note that I didn't see in the blueprints or the... Um, the instructions 
is I put an extra block right here because there's going to be a strap that attaches later. And I just put an extra block because the top piece is only a quarter inch thick. The way those screws can bite a little bit better. You don't have to try to hit that three quarters of an inch. But it comes in handy when you're getting all this lined up because all this stuff is just one by twos, most of it. And it's a little flexible until it's all screwed and glued together. So if you have some clamps, it comes in handy. Keeps everything squeezed up nice and tight and just in the right spot. So I, I clamped that back corner. Then I did that back corner. Clamped there and there. Put a screw there and there. And then I have, I'm doing this by myself. So I happen to have some long bar clamps. And that back there is real important. It's flush. And it kind of had a little, about an eighth inch bow in it. And I was having trouble getting it set in place and screwing it all at the same time by myself. So I put that clamp on there and squeezed it just right over there. So that's that. And also a rubber mallet of some sort. Because when you kind of, when you have this glue on the bottom of this and you go to clamping, you, it gets a little bit of hydraulic pressure and it'll want to slide around a little bit. So you'll have to dink it back around before you start setting screws in your corners and you don't want to booger it up with a hammer marker or anything so a rubber hammer comes in handy for that good thing to keep around the shop had that one for years you can tell it's old and wrinkly kind of like me all right so all we have left to do is to cut that panel it'll fit in here i'll screw it down oh yeah and another thing where these are i made a little mark right here on all of those so when I put this panel in here it gets screwed down about every 10 inches down through here so I'll know right where to put them so I don't accidentally put a hole in the wrong spot and let's see that's it I'll get that on and then it's ready to start putting together and it goes together pretty simple so stay tuned we're getting closer Inventor William Lawrence Murphy, 1856 to 1957, began tinkering with hideaway beds while living in a one-room apartment in San Francisco in the late 19th century. He was falling for a young opera singer and courting customs at the time would not permit a lady to enter a gentleman's bedroom. But according to family legend, Murphy's limited finances and a strict moral code didn't spoil his chances at love. His invention allowed him to stow his bed in his closet, transforming his one-room apartment from a bedroom into a parlor. The couple married in 1900. You, you, you gotta like a fellow that just makes something happen. Do, 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 okay, the bed frame section is complete. This strap right here holds the mattress in. When you put the mattress in there and then you, before you fold it up, this wraps around it and keeps it from flip flopping. Nice little legs right here. That mattress will be right in here and then things flip down and you set it down and there's a lot of screws in this thing so make it look professional if you want and measure everything out and kind of line things up makes it look good don't putty these 
all this will get painted. You can paint them. I wouldn't putty over these in case you ever have to replace one of them support members or something if something goes wrong. But this is done. I'm going to get this set down on the floor and then we're going to build the box frame around it. It's all ready to go. Just got to pre drill and screw it together. And we'll come back to that section and stand it up and show you how it operates. Oh, hey, that's a good steak. Should we give Maggie the bone? Mmm. What the bone, girl? So, I'm going to take that off. And then I'm going to stand this up. And you need to put it on a rug or something, the, the bottom of it. Because when you stand it up, it's going to want to slide a little bit. So don't scuff it up. And uh, it says not to do it by yourself. But me being a man and all, if somebody tells me not to do it, if it's within reason, I'm going to try. So... We're going to stand it up and see how it works. Got to be careful though, so it don't fall down. But the uh, the pistons aren't in it yet, so don't have any tension that way. Those will go on it after it's installed. We're just going to test fit. If everything looks good around it, then we actually have to take the outside box off. It's basically the top and back and a toe kick. Take the screws outside and that whole thing will come apart. And then um, the bed frame is kind of the only thing that stays together um, in shipping. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. This clamp up here where I can't find it later. Uh, time to take a sip. Ah. See if you can see the whole thing, pretty much. This thing's about 85 inches long, uh, end to end, outside to outside, and close, it's like close to four feet tall, 47 or something. Anyway. Here we go. <laughs> right. Yeah, front drags. All right. You gotta be careful it don't close up on you. Oh. A little heavy without the sh shock, and then I go in there and boom, and it'll all, when it's all sitting dead and square, that looks good. Got about the same reveal. You can move it around at this point, you see. So when you set it in, set it in place, you got to get it all square. That looks good. Get this out from underneath it. Throw this down. Down. Oh. And that's it. All I gotta do is take it back apart, take it to the job, like I said. Screw it to the wall next to the other one I built. Put the mattress in it. And, um, hang on, I got a pillow. It's nap time. for a minute. You can tell I don't get any naps because that's dusty. I'm kind of 
scared. I don't want it to close in on me, but it shouldn't. Here we go. You can feel it flex a little bit, but with the mattress on there, you won't. Ah. Okay, okay, here they are. Murphy beds are complete. And I'm glad instead of a shelf all the way across the top, the homeowner decided to uh, box that in and put some uh, storage up there, which it uh, looks really good. Got a little night light up underneath there so you could lay in the bed, read a book. Plenty of storage for Kids' toys or sheets. Okay. That's it on this one. Of course, there is another Murphy bed over here. I don't think that mattress is here yet. Are done just need another mattress cool fun project <laughs>